thank you very much, Lawrence, uh, for. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here in Tel Aviv uh, with you. And uh, we're going to start with uh, the Imagine Female Infertility with ultrasound and MRI. So the aim of this presentation is to discuss the different causes of female infertility, in particular uh, the etiology in which imaging plays a key role in the detection. Sometimes it could be so easy, but sometimes it is not. So <clears throat> the plan of the presentation is first to discuss about um, the ultrasound management and it is the first step to investigate uh, infertility. So what are the questions, what are the problems and what is the procedure that we have to perform to uh, explore infertility. Secondly, there is an MRI and what for MRI? When do we have performed MRI uh, after ultrasound? So there is a wide range of. You copy, copy me. Um, that's okay. Yes, that's okay. Okay. So uh, there is different uh, etiological factors uh, that can be grouped broadly into categories. There is uh, over, of, ovulatory abnormalities, uterus abnormalities, tubal abnormalities, and cervical abnormalities. First, cervical abnormalities, ultrasound and MRI, are not the good um, imaging to discuss uh, the etiology of uh, infertility. <coughs> Here you have an example uh, of ultrasound imaging. Uh, here there is um, an example of Nabot cyst, and it is not a problem, this uh, Nabot cyst is not the cause of infertility. We can't say that there is a stenosis of cervical structure, it is not a problem. So uh, MRI and ultrasound are not good exam to explore uh, cervical stenosis. Uterine abnormalities, <clears throat> the first etiology is the endometrial pathology and you have an example here of the presence of polyp and it is important to uh, take uh, precise di dimensions of this polyp uh, before hysteroscopy. You can perform um, a biometry of the cavity from the external orifice cervical and uh, the deep of the cavity that we have here. It is important to uh, give this measurement for uh, eventual IVF after uh, the infertility management. The myometrial pathology, the main myometrial pathology is the presence of adenomyosis. Adenomyosis, uh, it is the presence of endometrial glands uh, outside uh, the uterine cavity uh, throughout the myometrium. And uh, there is a big correlation between endometriosis and adenomyosis. And when you have patients with adenomyosis, you can see that women who did not conceive in this study because they had adenomyosis. We don't know exactly uh, what is the problem with this uh, pathology, but we know that there is a factor of infertility, probably um, uh, due to the discontractility of the myometrium. So TDS diagnosis, it is uh, an increased myometrial echogenicity uh, or linear hypereconic band that you see here on the bottom of the slide. The presence of hypoechoic areas uh, in the myometrium and it is a very uh, good sign that you see here. An anechoic area due to glandular dilatation of myometrial cyst that you have here and of course the enlargement uh, of the uterus with asymmetrical thickening of one of the walls like you have here, the posterior um, side is uh, bigger, uh, quite bigger than the anterior. When you have, when you found at least three of these signs, you can say that there is adenomyosis. <coughs> MRI 
MRI is probably most uh, precise to um, emphasize the adenomyosis because we can measure the junctional zone like you have here. It is here, it is a normal junctional zone. And when you have an enlargement of this junctional zone like this, you can say that there is adenomyosis. The other signs are the presence of hyper-intensity spots here, as we have on T2 generation, and uh, the presence of uh, a ratio, zone, uh, junctional zone and the myometrium superior to 40%. When you have uh, one of those three elements, you can say that the accuracy is superior to 85%. Here it is um, just a summarize of the literature um, uh, that, uh, uh, and you can see that MRI has a bigger sensitivity and sensibility here, like you see here, uh, in uh, the recent uh, literature. Mullerian duct anomalies, uh, it is uh, not a cause of infertility, but you have to explore that and uh, to make a precise report of this malformation because um, it is uh, a cause of um, abnormal uh, disruption and uh, we know that women with recurrent pregnancy loss have a prevalence of three times higher uh, malformation than the normal population. Here you have an example of a bicornuate uh, uterus that like you see here with two different cavities that you have two uh, finger cadmeries like this that like you see here. Here you have an example of MRI uh, with 3D accusation that you have here and it is quite easier to perform and uh, to, um, to explain the malformation with MRI because you can turn around uh, the structure with 3D acquisition and you have a more precise uh, report. <laughs> tubal abnormalities, tubal occlusion, uh, it is uh, the place is for hysterography that you have here because it is the only exam right now that can say that uh, there is or there's not uh, obstruction, tubal, uh, ob tubal obstruct abnormality. And you have here an example of ultrasound of um, hydrosalpans. It is a dilated fallopian tube. You can see the free fluid and the irregular wall of fallopian tube like you have here. An example with these smoothies. It is very important when you have destruction to turn the probe, to twist the probe, to have a precise diagnosis of these hydrosalpans and not to uh, make confusion with uh, ovarian cyst. MRI um, can provide the signal characterization. Uh, ultrasound said that there was a hydrosalpans, but here with MRI you can see the blood signal and you can see that uh, there is hematosalpans. Ovulatory abnormalities, ultrasound is very helpful because you can see the normal uh, ovary is like this with 15 follicles in the first period of the menstrual cycle and uh, here you have an example of premature ovarian failure without any uh, follicles that you see on this slide. <coughs> Polycystic ovarian syndrome is quite uh, frequent but it is important to know that there is 20 to 30 percent of the normal population who have the same imaging patterns. So uh, you have precise elements to, um, uh, to allow the diagnosis and it is important to respect all these elements. First, it is enlarged ovary superior to uh, 7 centimeter. Multiple small uh, follicles, infer inferior, uh, inferior 10 millimeters, uh, and all those follicles have to be greater than 12. And there is a hypertrophic echogenic central ovarian stroma that you see on this slide. So it is important to respect all the elements to, uh, uh, 
to um, avoid uh, overdiagnosis. MRI has a better visualization when it is uh, difficult with the ultrasound uh, because of the obesity of the patient, for example, and it is quite uh, easier to diagnose and to make the diagnosis with MRI because the ovary are very uh, clear. Pelvic inflammatory disease and endometriosis are a very frequent cause of infertility. Infection, you know the infection, the tubal damage and occlusion due to pelvic inflammatory disease. And the endometriosis is a very, very uh, important factor. Uh, you have to know that approximately 30 uh, to 50 percent of women with endometriosis are infertile. So it is uh, very important to make the diagnosis um, early because uh, the consequences are very important for these uh, young patients. You know that endometriosis screening is quite difficult because there is a lot of locations of those uh, endometriosis lesions. So ultrasound uh, first line first line is important. Uh, the most recognized sonographic appearance is this uh, this endometrioma. You have a homogeneous low level because with some areas uh, of increased echogenicity. And when you do uh, the compression with uh, the other end, uh, you can see that there's no movement inside the cyst. So it is uh, due to the presence of the blood. And you can say uh, reliably uh, that there, it is an endometrioma. The other deep locations are quite uh, more difficult to, to do because uh